What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you some of the build ideas I have in mind for Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader as the full release of the game is less than a week away. And since Alcat has given me access to a pre-release version of the title, that is essentially the release version just minus the last two acts, I've had a chance to play around with some of the builds I would like to try and am planning to do full playthroughs with, and I've got five of them for you here today to just kind of start a discussion or maybe see what's available. That said, one of them, probably the first one we'll talk about here, is less of an idea and more of a fully formed build. And really the only thing I'm waiting on here is seeing how it performs in the last bit of the game, but you'll almost certainly get a build video on that one, which is naturally where we will start. I'm calling it Purity and Flame, as it mixes the sanctioned Psyker origin with the warrior and later assassin archetypes to both put out some insane damage and really just relegate most of the incoming damage down to nothing. Now this is possible through a few things. From Sanctioned Psyker we're going to be picking up Biomancy at first because they get some buffs to your melee damage via Iron Arm and they can also pick up an ability that will poison and deal damage over time to any enemy that they hit with anything. On top of an ability that makes it so as they deal damage they are increasingly more likely to shrug off otherwise lethal damage. Later you then pick up the Pyromancy Psyker abilities which will allow you to have a little bit of ranged capability because if you can't get in melee range of something, now you can use the Pyromancer's Ignite ability, which will cause another damage over time effect, and the Pyromancy skills and talents, if you will, also have a lot of damage over time buffs that you can pick up to amplify all of your damage over time to also debuff the enemy while you're at it. But that's just the sanctioned Psyker stuff. Then from the archetypes, the warrior and then later the assassin, we gain a ton of melee damage. The warrior is of course all about charging up and getting close to enemies and their heroic moment, which is like their ultimate ability in combat, allows them to regain movement they would otherwise lose and make multiple attacks in a single round. That ability alone allows them to take out many targets despite being melee which is then further amplified by the assassin archetype which allows them to whittle down defenses via things like the aim for the opening ability and assassin combined with our pyromancy debuffs just wrecks enemies. And what's more, this build can make use of some really great items you can get early into act two that both really give you insane damage from a weapon called righteous justice and an armor set you can get that will reduce incoming damage by like 90 if they're not reducing it further from the enemy. So again, less of an idea, more of a fully formed build on that one, but it is a ton of fun. I've messed around with it a lot across the beta and later in the pre-release version, which got the pyromancy abilities. Very excited to play through that with the whole game. Now, next up for our second build, we've got another fun one here with the Crime Lord Operative. For this one, we'll be taking the Crime Lord Origin, mostly due to their Surefire Plan ability. This allows them to use stacks of an ability called Surefire Plan that will then buff the next action they take with with extra damage, more defense, or reducing enemy damage. And we're going to take that origin and then combine it with the operative archetype and then later the bounty hunter to both be able to debuff enemies and enhance our own damage in a way that is very versatile. On top of all of that, we get to do space crimes because we're a crime lord, which deep down is what I think we all want. But a little more specifically, the operative archetype here is really great at debuffing enemies with their Analyze Enemies ability that increases the damage they take from you as you take off exploit stacks. They can also use another ability called Expose Weakness to strip armor from the target and make them easier to hit, effectively making your entire team do more damage. On top of their ultimate ability, or their heroic ability, Dismantling Attack being a guaranteed hit that drastically reduces their dodge and armor. But then we sort of juxtapose that with the Bounty Hunter archetype for their advanced one that gives them access to a lot of damage dealing abilities that I think in combination with the versatile Surefire Plan, which both debuffs or increases your own damage, should allow me to adapt to a battlefield to either control what enemies are doing or simply maximize damage against them. So I'm looking forward to that one. I think it's going to be fun. But that does bring us to our number three option, which is the Noble Officer into Master Tactician. Now, we're going to start with the Noble Origin here, primarily due to their ability called You Serve Me, which allows them to assign an ally as a servant that gives both the Noble and that ally all sorts of benefits, especially if you take up the supporting talents that further buff this and to take that even farther we're going to put that with the archetypes that do much the same thing starting with the officer which gives you things like voice of command which increases all of their characteristics 
alongside other abilities that give you the chance to grant allies extra attacks via things like Bring It Down, or their ultimate ability called Finest Hour, which just straight up gives them a full extra turn. So already, kind of a very command and conquer sort of build idea where your main character is really just forcing extra turns and damage buffs onto your allies very quickly, which is then enhanced further by the Master Tactician archetype, which gets their tactical advantage feature, if you will, that allows them to gain and sort of store up stacks of tactical advantage that they can then spend on either increasing their own damage or use abilities like Inspire to use it on their other allies, which should go very nicely with You Serve Me. So the idea for this build is a commander of sorts that is essentially directly controlling and buffing up your allies in a way that is very thematic to both what a rogue trader does and Warhammer 40k as a whole. So definitely leaning fully into the leadership style of build with this one, and I think it's going to be a blast. Now, for the fourth one, we're going to pick up the Astra Militarum Commander Origin for their Regimental Tactics ability. This allows them to buff both themselves and their allies with a very large one-term damage bonus that can only be used once per combat, provided the enemies are directly adjacent to them. Now we're going to take this, otherwise I would say pretty average, origin and mix it with the Soldier and Bounty Hunter archetypes. Now the Soldier archetype is your ranged archetype. If you want to use basically any sort of ranged weapon, this is what you want. You're going to get things like run and gun to allow you to move and take extra shots on top of just weapons natural burst fire if it has any. And you also pick up revel and slaughter, which boosts your ballistic skill, which allows you to use ranged weapons and grants you extra crit chance. Their heroic ability, firearm mastery, allows you to make a number of extra attacks equal to your weapon's rate of fire while not costing any action points to actually use them. And while that archetype's pretty decent on its its own, we're going to combine it with Bounty Hunter to allow us to mark various prey and increase our damage against them to really maximize that damage spread. So my idea for this is a ranged character that is capable of essentially just once per combat dealing just a massive amount of damage in some sort of directed fire scenarios via that regimental tactics ability working in tandem with the already pretty solid ranged archetype options. So what I have in mind for this build is essentially someone who actually uses ranged weaponry and makes use of the many automatic weapons of destruction we find across Rogue Trader here. Though it remains to be seen how that one's going to pan out. Which brings us to our last build, which is going to be our Navy Officer into Vanguard option. Which is also coincidentally a fantastic way to go for Abelard, as he kind of naturally leans that way anyway, which is one of our companions. Because we'll be picking up the Navy Officer Origin, which comes with Brace for Impact, which allows us to reduce damage taken by a fairly substantial amount once per combat, making you very tanky. And we're going to take this origin and then combine it with the tankier archetypes, starting with the warrior, both to give us our melee options as well as eventual access to heavy armor via increasing strength just naturally, which you need to pick up the heavy armor feat. But then later on, we're going to be picking up the vanguard archetype. Now the warrior archetype on its own is going to give us access to all sorts of offensive melee abilities, but vanguard is a lot of defensive and and reactionary melee abilities. It's going to allow us to stack all sorts of temporary health alongside other defensive buffs that also cause you to counterattack. So my idea for this build is basically a character that is very good at essentially just not dying, but also being able to then counteract whatever enemies are trying to do to them. And then on top of all sorts of heavy armor and melee weapon options that we already discussed towards the beginning of the video, I'm thinking with this build I can make a character that is, at the very least, extremely difficult to kill, while also still doing very good damage via the very solid warrior abilities and their heroic act, which makes them quite mobile as well. But that's pretty much going to do it for the builds I'm excited to play, I would say. Number one is definitely the Purity and Flame one we talked about first. I'm very excited to try that out. It is working astonishingly well in the pre-release version. But at any rate, I hope this video gave you some ideas about some of the possible options here. So by all means, let me know what you yourself would like to play or what you're planning on playing or simply what you think of these build ideas. That is going to do it for this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, but regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.